Right then, welcome back. And today, oh yeah, we're going to do a setup. A setup video for the 2001 Honda VTR 1000 SP1. Terrible hand at Scrabble, awesome motorbike. Now, call me a cynic, but this only exists because Ducati were winning the World Superbikes over and over and over again, and Honda weren't happy, and they went, no, we're going to build a 1000cc 90 degree V-twin, and we're going to smash Ducati to pieces. Now, first time out, it won, and then, I think it was 2000, and then it won again in 2002 with the SP2 update. Well, this is the SP1. I'm not a massive fan of the color. I quite like blue and purple and dark blue bikes, but I'd much rather it was the proper red Honda color with uh, the black wing graphic up the side, but it is what it is. So, we shall begin. First up then, we went to VIR North, and the bike felt quite slow. Um, the AI were absolutely giving no no quarter whatsoever um, the mix of bikes was mega we had zx 14s or zr 14s we had um mv augustas we had blades and repsol covers colors higher buses hyper motards we had everything what the rider on the blade must have been thinking when someone went up the inside and the outside at the same time and then did a nice cross maneuver in front of him or her, I'm not sure, but we ended up on a 124.74, which would have put us 59th on the 800 to 999 leaderboard. Now again, the problem is the SP1 just goes past that 800 mark, so you could change the tires and probably sit at the top of the uh, 700 to 799 leaderboards. But anyway, Darlington National was next, Carnage ensued again, look at the state of all of this. I'm trying to stay out of the way and just behave. Um, the bike, I did one click on preload and took one click off every other rear suspension setting and you can just see as I'm getting on the gas the bike is just starting to step out of the rear there you go just you can see it just starting to squat and move and it was giving the rear tire a bit of a hard time it was making it difficult to get the power down as well but we ended up on a 107.167 which was 103rd not enough power nowhere near enough power um, to be anywhere on that leaderboard on the bike however like the race bike, the front end of the bike was very good. Next, oh, my favorite, Alton Island. Um, big fan of this, big fan of Foster's, and we added, what do we add? A clicker rear spring and a clicker compression. Now we left the rebound where it was just to give a bit more rear support, um, and the bike was much, much better. The drive the bike was now getting was really good. Um, it was just starting to pick the front wheel up out of corners, just nice, just loads and loads and loads of power. Um, it was this corner that was causing me all the trouble. Where's the breaking point? Don't know, there's no markers. And then you're into an uphill exit with a little bump, which just flicks the front end up. We're racing 1098s and all sorts at this point. Um, we ended up on a 119.487, which would have put us 18th now for a bike that sits at the bottom end of a 200 PI performance rating performance index ladder. I thought that was a pretty solid lap. Um, and the replay is absolutely fantastic, so I'll get that one up. Next, well, it's an old school world superbike, isn't it? So I had to go to Phillip Island and look at the state of this, it's just carnage everywhere. We did end up getting away in a reasonably clean lap and it turned into a bit of a well, that was a bit cheeky, but it turned into a bit of a world superbike fest. There was 998 Ducatis everywhere and Aprilias, and we did a 131.3, and it was that far down the leaderboard that the leaderboard crashed and said there was a problem retrieving data. So I'm going to take that as a sign that it was a slow lap, um, but it is what it is. And then we went to Canto South, half the field was in an accident in the first accident. Now. I do like Cano South, I like coming here and mucking about and sliding the bikes about. Before anyone starts giving me grief um, in the car, I mean, look at the front end on this bike. Yes, there was a cheeky little nudge there, but the front end of it is just fantastic. Yeah, before anyone starts giving me grief, the reason I come here is because it allows me to push the wet tyres really, really hard. So once I've kind of got the setup to where I want it to be, and I'm not running into the back of fire blades and trying to go through them rather than round them, uh, and we did a 139.56 by the way, which would have been 30th, which again, on a bike that's at the bottom end of the 
performance index uh, on the leaderboards, I thought that was quite good. Yeah, it lets me torture the the wet. So if there was a wet race or a a race that goes from wet to dry, then it allows me to push the bike to the limit. So set up then. There it is. I'll say it like the same as I did for the race bike. Typical Honda. Um, Extreme setup on preload, spring hardness as well. Pros, the front end, it's the same as the race bike. The front end is absolutely fantastic. And it's a HRC machine. HRC don't get involved in too many things. Um, the things they do touch normally tend to be very, very special motorbikes. Um, and just a little bit of trivia for you. The NC700 and 750 series have been a little bit of HRC magic sprinkled on them. There you go. Um, yeah, they have a they have an HRC chassis number. So yeah, there we go. Uh, and it's quite a friendly thousand cc bike. It's not something that's going to scare the pants off you. The front end, like I said, is very reliable. You can be late on the brakes. It's not got that much grunt that it's going to be flicking you off the side and wheeling itself into oblivion all the time. Um, cons, it's just just the wrong side of the 800 performance index barrier so you're into leaderboards with much much faster bikes it's quite long and low hence the extreme settings on the preload and the springs and that it's not something that will turn quickly it's not like a Panigale or like a later model Fireblade where the wheelbase is quite short it does take a bit of like a 250-ish line where you've got to run a bit wider and carry a bit more corner speed and in all honesty it's not that fast yes we had a what? We had a 59th, we had an 18th and a 30th, but oh, there's not a massive amount of speed left in it. So if you're new to the 1000cc bikes and you want something to ride as a road bike that you're going to be able to set up and it's going to be competitive and nice and friendly ride, not trying to kill you all the time, then that is probably the one to go for. Uh, anti wheelie on one, engine braking two, traction control on zero. Engine braking, you could knock it up to three but it just tends to kick the back end out a little bit more again it's the same as the race bike very very similar road and race bikes there's not a massive amount in it pace wise neither it's two bikes that you can tell that it was developed as a race machine rather than a road bike that was then turned into a race bike and yeah that's it have a go with the tune let me know how you get on i'll put a couple of the replays out i'm not gonna go mad like i did the other day with the r7 i know i went a bit above and beyond but i just thought i'll do one i'll do them all but i'll put some of our probably ooh, i'll probably the vir north one the alton island the philip and i might do the canto but i don't know we'll see we'll see what um what floats my boat but let me know with the replays let me know whether you want all tv style cameras or i'm going to start mixing it up with different views so i might do a lap on a tv camera a lap behind the bike and then a lap um a lap on the on the cockpit view or the helmet cam so you can see the dash and everything else but let me know let me know what you think let me know what you enjoy and i will try and give you what you want so you enjoy watching and giving a like and a subscribe and everything else but yeah there we go thanks for watching fingers crossed i will see you next time take care stay safe peace